Good afternoon. Thank you all for being here this afternoon. Uh, obviously, when your football season ends in November, it's not a good thing. And um, very disappointed with our performance this football season. Uh, that being said, I have a great amount of respect for the young men on this football team and what they do each and every week. It's, it's not easy being a student athlete, competing at this level, uh, balancing what they balance, and just a great amount of respect for the young men on this, this team that, that, that do that. I believed in Cliff Kingsbury when we hired him in December 2012, and I believe in Cliff Kingsbury today. I look forward to future success uh, under his leadership as we move forward, I'm confident that there are much better days ahead for Texas Tech football. Again, disappointed with where we are today, but optimistic about our future. And with that, I'll stop and happy to entertain any questions that, that you may have. When will you have your uh, end of season meeting with Cliff? You know, Cliff and I meet on a regular basis, and we've met a few times over the course of the past week. We, we met yesterday for a considerable amount of time, and, and we're in a period of self-evaluation right now, um, spending a great deal of time evaluating where we are and why we are in this position today, as well as the, the future plans and, and how we're going to uh, continue to take steps forward to get to a, a better place quickly. So uh, it's, it's ongoing, uh, but we met as recently as yesterday, and we'll continue to meet in the month ahead. Absolutely. Absolutely. As I said, I believed in him uh, December 2012 and believe in him today and, and know that there's a much better future ahead. Well, what gives you the optimism that you believe there, there's a greater future ahead? Well, there's a lot of things. When, when you find yourself in a position as, as we are today, it causes you to pause and to look at everything that is happening on the field and off the field in all aspects of, of this program. Uh, it causes you to, to, to think about the leadership. It causes you to think about your recruiting philosophy. It causes you to uh, reflect on what you're doing in your strength and conditioning program, uh, your nutritional program. Um, how are we teaching young men to be successful, to compete? Uh, what are we doing in all three phases of the game? Uh, at the same time, you know, it... it points to a lot of things that are being done the right way within this football program today. This program is, is being run with a commitment of doing things the right way each and every day. This program is being run by men of character that um, are treating the young people involved in this program and everybody associated with this program with a great deal of respect. It's a program that is being executed each day with values that are in alignment with Texas Tech University. Uh, there's a standard that has been set within this football program for young men, and they comply with, with that standard to participate. And Don mentioned that in his column this morning in the paper that I read. There, there are a lot of positive things going on within this Texas Tech football program that will lead to long-term success. But obviously there are improvements that uh, have to be made to get better on the field. Any specific improvements? Well, I, I think, as, as we've discussed, you, you look back over the course of the last four years, and I think there have been decisions and improvements that have been made that we will see the results of in the years ahead of us. I think when you look at uh, recruiting, uh, a change was made two years uh, into Cliff's leadership here on how we focused uh, our recruiting efforts and initiatives, uh, you know, the first year. He was putting together a staff trying to put together a recruiting class. In year two, it was highly focused on two-year transfers. And, and after that, we, we took a step back and started focusing on high school recruits and prospects, started giving great emphasis on the state of Texas and the contiguous states around. If you look at the 2015-2016 recruiting classes, you'll see that 40 of the 50 signees that we've had are from the state of Texas. 
Uh, 44 of the 50 are from Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana. So there's a sharp focus in our recruiting efforts that I think we saw some of those young men uh, perform exceptionally well this year and think we'll see uh, results of, of that focus uh, in future years as well. Um, you know, we'll have 70, 72 scholarship players on our campus this spring for spring football practice. That's, that's a significant number. That's a great advantage for us with the 18 or 19 returning starters that, that we have. So that gives me reason for optimism. You look at the changes in our strength and conditioning program. Um, this will be the second year under the leadership of Rusty Witt. Uh, Coach Witt has done an exceptional job. I think he's one of the best in the business at what he does. We saw tremendous gains uh, last year in our strength and conditioning performance numbers. Uh, we saw a team that gained over 650, 650 pounds collectively. Um, Coach Witt is, is doing good things in strength and conditioning, and I think we'll continue to see uh, positive results in his second full year with us. Uh, I think as you look at all three phases of the game of football offensively we have a championship caliber offense uh, we have last time i looked a few days ago our offense was total offense was ranked number one in the country and you know you think about the phenomenal quarterback that that we had leading us this year and, and we did a lot of that through the air you know our run game was uh, ineffective at times and you got to be balanced so you think with a balanced running game with the scheme that we have uh, what our offensive production could be. One that's already one of the best in the country today. Um, we return all of our offensive linemen with the exception of Balaam Brown. I think we saw in the last half of the season, uh, DeLeon Ward and, and what type of runner he is. So that gives me great optimism that we'll have a balanced attack as, as we go forward. Defense, um, we're not very good. We're not going to achieve at the level that we expect to achieve. We're not going to have the results that we expect to have uh, with the defensive performance that we've put on the field. And, and that's got to improve. And Coach Kingsbury and I have spent a considerable amount of time talking about that. Um, I think the continuity and scheme, the continuity and staff is important. And I think as we move forward, you will see Coach Kingsbury become much more involved and engaged on the defensive side of the ball than he's ever been uh, as a head coach up to this point in his career at Texas Tech. So uh, I would look for Coach Kingsbury to have uh, much greater involvement and engagement on the defensive side of the ball beginning this spring as this football program moves forward. And I think, you know, obviously he's got an eye as to how to dissect um, defenses from an offensive perspective. And, and I think there are uh, a lot of elements um, and things that he can bring to the defensive side of the ball that can have an immediate a positive impact on us. So all those things give me reason to be optimistic about our future. Kirby, in the position that you're in, you obviously have to have the temperament to be able to take in all four seasons as a whole, not just one game. But coming off of the loss to Iowa State and then moving into the final regular season game against Baylor, would you say there was much riding on that game against Baylor as far as Cliff's future and being able to secure you know, a vision moving forward that you could ride momentum into next season? Yeah, that's, that's a really good question, Andrew, and I think um, you, you're exactly right. Uh, in, in this position, you're aware that there are going to be emotional highs and there are going to be emotional lows, but decisions as to the future of a particular program uh, of this magnitude are, are made with a holistic viewpoint. And uh, with, with the understanding and knowledge about what's taken place within all aspects of the program and it's not made upon the results of one particular game so uh, it's what i see in the environment and in the culture uh, taking place within texas tech football that i still believe that the foundation is there for success that being said none of us are happy believe me with standing here um, at a five and seven season uh, our season is over you turn in the pads in november that's not a good thing and don't plan to be in this position again. So uh, they're not pleased at all with where we are, but still confident that the foundational uh, pieces are in place that can lead to future success. And uh, that gives me optimism for the future of Texas Tech football. With, with that said, do you see, foresee any changes with the current staff or do you want the staff to you want everybody to stick together for at least next year? 
Well, those are decisions that Coach Kingsbury ha has to make, and, and he and I have talked uh, about that, and I know uh, he is a strong believer in continuity and believes that he's got a strong staff and, and also knows that there's got to be changes made to day-to-day -day operations to allow him to engage on the defensive side of the ball that's going to be required um, as, as we move forward. So uh, what changes he ultimately makes will be his responsibility, but I do think that at least in the day-to-day -day, day -day management leadership that there will have to be some changes made to allow him to be involved on the defensive side of the ball as he plans to be going forward. Will those changes still be that include a calling or bringing an OC to call plays? You know, I, 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 again, we're in a period of self evaluation right now, Aaron, and I, I would anticipate that Coach Kingsbury will continue to uh, be our play caller on game days. I think he's the best in the country at that, uh, but obviously the day-to-day -day, uh, involvement on the, on the offensive side of the ball, he can't continue to be as engaged each and every day to, uh, to focus on the, the defensive side of the ball as he plans to going forward. So th those decisions will be made in time, but I would expect Coach Kingsbury to continue to be our play caller on, on game days. Kind of picking back up on Andrew's question, how you talked about your belief in Coach Kingsbury, how steady was that throughout the season, particularly after those games with West Virginia and Iowa State? Well, it, um, uh, I, I, I believe in Cliff. He's got the characteristics of being a self, uh, of a, a very successful head coach. Um, I see each and every day how he leads young men. I, I see the way that these young men within this program respond. Uh, to his leadership, and, and, and that's positive. You know, I also see the, the bigger picture and the challenges um, of, of, of what we have in front of us going forward. And, and, and with that being said, you know, the, the, the margins of separation within college football when you play within a, the Big 12 Conference are so slim. And we cannot allow our program to be disadvantaged in, in any way in which we have influence and control over. You know, this season, it's not an excuse, but it's, it's a fact, and Coach Kingsbury would never say this. He never said a word to me about this. He never mentioned it to y'all. But we, met, we missed, I think, five or six practices at key times this year, one being the Thursday before the West Virginia game because of weather conditions, because of weather in the area didn't, we would not allow our team to go out and practice because of lightning in the area. And, and those storm cells those days stayed over us where they couldn't practice. So the Thursday before the West Virginia game, we had a team walkthrough in our football locker room. We couldn't even fit all the guys in there at, at one time. So before the biggest game of the season at that particular time, we missed a critical Thursday practice. Obviously, that disadvantage is being resolved due to the generosity of some great Red Raider supporters and donors with the Sports Performance Center that we see the, the still uh, being erected right now. That's going to be a first-class facility, state-of-the-art, that will be in place uh, for next season. So, um, but to answer your question, I just, I, I see his leadership. I see the culture that's being built. I see the, the young men and how they respond uh, to this coaching staff and um, confident that there are better days ahead for us. Kirby, with regard to um, Coach Kingsbury's involvement on the defense, is that something that you kind of see that he should be involved in, that you've asked him to be involved in, maybe taking more of a 30,000 foot approach? Well, I, I think it's important. He's our head football coach, and he's ultimately responsible for, for all aspects of this football program. And I think it's, it's, it's obvious to, to him that he's got to be more involved uh, on the defensive side of the ball. When you look at uh, the, the number of points that we gave up each and every week, you, you, you're not get, you can't expect to win at the level we expect to win at and compete at by, by giving up that many points. So uh, it's an area uh, of the program that he, he has self-identified that he's got to become more engaged in. And um, I'm excited to, to see that this spring and, and the improvements that will be made on that side of the ball with his, his involvement there. What's your message to the, to the fan base just in general that kind of looks at this season? Obviously, they have the same disappointment that, that you have, but what would you say to them? Well, I, we're so fortunate to have the support of this fan base and, and the way that they, they support us, it seems, you know, time after time, they, they lift this athletics department on their shoulders and, and support us. And uh, we're, we're all frustrated when, when you have a, a, the results of a football season that we've had. Uh, we're all disappointed. We're, we're all uh, frustrated by it. But at the same time, we have the resolve to stand up 
and to work to get better. And uh, there are better days ahead for this program. Um, you know, when you have the returners coming back that we have next year, when you have the continuity in staff, when you have the continued investments that are being made into this uh, football program, th there are better days ahead. And uh, I'm confident of, the, of that, and um, I expect that, and I know our fan base expects that. In your conversations with, with Cliff, uh, you know, I'm sure you guys have talked about the, just the slim margin of victory and how you know, different games could have gone this year, but uh, has there been a conversation at, at all that headed into 2017 being that with four seasons in, he does have two that are sub 500 that we, we got to see the results and this is a make or break year. Well, I, you know, Andrew, I would never go as far as to saying, hey, we've got to get this, this many wins for us to consider this a successful season. There are so many things that can happen within the course of a football season and the way that the, the ball could, could bounce. But uh, obviously, a 5-7 and seven 2016 season is not one that we're proud of. It's not one that uh, meets our expectations, and, and nobody knows that um, stronger than, than Coach Kingsbury does. So we all expect a, a much greater 2017 football season. Kirby, how close are you to this situation in this sense? Do you feel like it's your responsibility to know the chemistry of this team, to know what's going on in the locker room? know if guys are, are getting along. I mean, are you, when you talk to Cliff, do you, do you talk about that? Or maybe, you know, you see body language here, or something good, something bad. Is that something that you look at and talk to him about? Yeah, we, we, we do. And, um, you know, I, I, I enjoy being around these kids. That's why I'm in this profession. We have 450 student athletes that work hard each and every day. And, uh, that's, that's why we do what we do in this profession. It, it's watching these young people compete, uh, watch, watching them succeed, uh, watching them experience failure it is all part of the learning process and, and, and lessons that are shaping their future and who they'll be in whatever professional endeavor or career they go into. How uh, they grow during their time here will influence them to be successful citizens and to be husbands and mothers and you know that's that's a huge responsibility and and one that you know I enjoy getting to know these young people and talking to them and and we all know from any successful organization you're only going to be as strong as those around you and if there's dissension with within a coaching locker room if there's dissension within a players locker room you're not going to be successful as an organization and uh, we talk about those things all the time and there was not dissension within our locker room this year. There was not dissension uh, amongst our coaching staff. These kids uh, continue to fight, you know, until that last, last whistle against uh, Baylor. That's why I have so much great respect for them and uh, their, their attitude. And um, so th those are things that, you know, I, I enjoy being around these young men. I, I, I love going to practice on the road trips and, and talking to them about where they're from and what their majors are and, you know, what's going on off the field because, uh, again, it's, it's, it's difficult to do what they do. But I, I probably enjoy that aspect of my job as, as much as, as any, and uh, it, it's an important uh, piece as well. Do you anticipate any changes being made to Coach King for his contract? You know, we, um, we continue to put ourselves in a position to make the best decisions possible for uh, Texas Tech University. Um, you know, at this time, he's, we're moving forward with Coach Kingsbury uh, being our head football coach um, and confident that there are uh, successful days ahead. Kirby, a moment ago, when you were talking about Cliff remaining a play caller, but needing someone else to help with the day to day oversight of the program, what form do you expect that to take? Well, I, I think Don is. In referencing that, it uh, you know the day-to-day -day scripting uh, of of the practice, the day-to-day -day, um, uh, organization of practice af activities, uh, leading the individual position meetings for quarterback, uh, sitting in you know all the offensive meetings. Um, the the he'll, he'll have to you know lean more on offensive coordinator. Uh, other position coaches to fulfill those responsibilities so that he can be more engaged on the defensive side of the ball. So it's the day-to-day -day scripting, planning, 
uh, individual meetings uh, that take place that, that others will have to step forward and, and uh, take those responsibilities off his plate. And was that your recommendation or how did y'all arrive at that? Uh, well, we, we're talking about these things, and uh, ultimately he's responsible, um, and we both see that defensively we've got to be a better football team, and uh, it's his responsibility to, um, to, to, to put a better defensive product on the field. What about from a motivation standpoint, how does the 48, I mean, you mentioned one reason, but how does the 48-17 loss to West Virginia happen, and how does the 66-10 loss to Iowa State? Well, it, you know, I, I think you have, to, um, you have to prepare and coach better, and you have to practice and execute better. Um, you only get 12 of these opportunities a year. You're only guaranteed 12. And when you, uh, you, you perform like we did in those two, two particular games, it's, it's unacceptable. And, and we've got to find a way that uh, that doesn't um, happen. And how does that, how do you prepare against that? You plan and coach better, and you motivate in different channels when you have to. And I'd say the, the, the team has to accept some responsibility in their uh, practice and execution of what they, they focus on all week. So. I think um, over the next month, we'll spend more time talking about that, those particular outcomes and what we did that week and what needs, what needs to change. Um, I'm, I'm not sure I have that answer standing here today other than those type of performances are, are not good. And you got to you know, self-evaluate and to um, review everything that happened over the course of those weeks and, and again, Sharpen the saw. Can you, um, folks have asked the wisdom of the contract that you, the extension that you gave Kirby, uh, or after the TA quit, um, with all the guaranteed money. How do you feel about that, the wisdom of that today? Well, I said that, you know, I started out by saying I believed in Cliff Kingsbury when we hired him in December of 2012. I believe in Cliff Kingsbury today. Um, I will always make the best decisions that are um, in the best interest of Texas Tech University. We have always been and will always continue to be responsible in the management of our finances and all the resources. Um, so, you know, but that didn't come into the, the thought process of, of this decision to continue to move forward. We, we're moving forward with Coach Kingsbury. Uh, because it's the right thing for Texas Tech University, and it's uh, the continuity that's going to continue to be provided in another year is important for, for where we are today. So uh, each and every day I'm going to get up and look everybody in the eye, make the best decisions for Texas Tech University, and uh, continue to do that every day. So the cost of changing coaches was not, was not a factor in this decision to stay the course? decision to stay the course is what's best for Texas Tech. Do you expect David Gibbs to return? Um, I think so. I hope so. Um, I think uh, I have no reason to believe he won't, um, Coach Gibbs. I think we've seen um, signs that uh, our defense has, has made improvements. We've seen glimpses of that through the course of the season, and I think uh, we'll benefit greatly uh, by Coach Gibbs' leadership another year and, and continuity yet in that position. So uh, have no reason not to believe it and, and hope so. Unlike Cliff, his contract expired. He was only signed a two-year contract. What's going forward in regards to, to how long you know, he'll be at Tech? Who is that? Um, Gibbs. Coach Gibbs? Um, you know, we, we haven't had, had that conversation. But, um, you know, again, it's, it's, it's my expectations standing here this afternoon that Coach Gibbs will continue to be our defensive coordinator and will continue to uh, build with these young men that uh, he and his assistants have recruited and, and brought here, and uh, there'll be better days for us on the defensive side of the ball. What has he told the kids about what he's seen from the development of the defense uh, throughout the season? 
Well, you know, he, um, he, he's seen a group of kids who have continued to fight and, and, and get better. And I think, you know, um, we've got to continue to, to recruit and to um, strengthen our, our personnel on, on that side of the ball. I think when you look at uh, where we were on the defensive side of the ball uh, this year, you know, you look at some of the leaders on, on that side of the ball and, and where we are, you know, Deshaun Johnson is probably our, our vocal, emotional leader on the defensive side of the ball. He's, he's a sophomore. Um, and when you think about a, a young man being the emotional, vocal leader on the defensive side of the ball, and he's an underclassman, that, that doesn't happen very often. Uh, you look at Braden Fajoko, still a sophomore, still an underclassman there. Um, you know, you look at a, a young man like Jordan Brooks, what a, what a tremendous year that young man had. To, to play um, at this level as a true freshman, that, that doesn't happen very often. That gives you reason for great optimism. Um, when you look at um, what happened to us at, at the, the linebacker position and, and, you know, some of the key starters that we lost uh, before the season started or – uh, with various injuries over the course of the season. I, you, you saw a group of young men that continue to battle and, and, and try to get better. And I think as those underclassmen get an additional year of experience, as we continue our recruiting efforts to, to build and, and give them more depth on that side of the ball, uh, we're going to see a better product on the defensive side of the ball. Kirby, you, you talked a little bit about Cliff's role changing a little bit with regard to the defense. Can you walk us through a little bit about what it's like for you in terms of how you, how involved you get or don't get when it comes to, to running the football program and then having to let somebody run it and, and say you're in charge, but on the other hand, you're the one that's responsible? Well, we're in this together. I mean, we, 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 we uh, the athletic director, the head football coach, the assistant coaches, the student athletes, we are in this together each and every day. And we're going to continue to work together and, and – Make, make improvements and make adjustments when we need to make them. Uh, we continue to believe in each other and support each other. So, um, you know, at, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm ultimately responsible, but Coach Kingsbury is responsible day to day. And so, you know, I continue to trust his, his leadership and the decisions that he makes. And, again, um, look forward to better days ahead. Kirby, do you get feedback from the players about the coaches? about their position coaches, about Coach Kingsbury at all? You know, no. I, I, yes and no. I mean, we do exit interviews with our outgoing senior student athletes each and every year. Uh, so over the course of December, January, we'll do that. And that's with every sport. So with, uh, with myself and the sport administrator, in football's case, is, is Chad Weiberg. We'll have a chance to sit down with all the outgoing seniors and talk to them about their experience. Uh, everything from academic support and uh, our tutoring program to our nut nutritional program, strength and conditioning, um, you know, their, their, their coaching situation with their position coach, et cetera. We, we also have an annual uh, evaluate, an annual evaluation uh, that we do with all of our student athletes on on their experience and again that the experience is much greater than than just a coaching experience um, and, and I tell our student athletes when I, I have a chance to meet with them I have an open door with the exception of playing time I, I, I'm not going to help them with playing time but if ever they have a, a concern outside of that with their experience uh, at Texas Tech University you know we, we want to know that immediately so um, you know, I, I think I'm engaged. I think I'm around this program day-to-day uh, -to -day on a regular basis to observe what's going on uh, on the practice fields, in the meeting rooms, around the offices. So, um, you know, I think this football season, every, every Wednesday, once I got back to town for my CFP obligations, I'm, I make sure I, I go over there and, and see our coaches and go to practice Wednesday and Thursday at least for a little bit. And, and make sure that I'm as engaged as, as I possibly can be in my position. I guess away from the tech program, uh, what's it been like for you uh, just the past couple weeks with the playoff committee, especially the first couple weeks, kind of being you know, the public face of this committee with so many, uh, you know, face for so many big time programs on the line these weeks? 
Well, it's uh, it's been a lot of fun. I, you know, it it it, it has. Um, college football is is unique in our society with how popular it is. It continues to grow. Um, you know, I knew from my first year on the selection committee that it was a, a time commitment. And I knew when I was presented the opportunity to serve as the chair, it would be an additional time commitment. And, and uh, that it's been. But, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a privilege for me to have the opportunity to be engaged with the, the game on the national level, to a game that means so much to, to so many people within our society. Um, so it's, it, it's been fun. There's still, we can say, a lot of football left to be played uh, next weekend before the final rankings. Cliff kind of said, you know, before the season and off the season that he thought this was going to be, you know, the best team that he's had since he's been here. From your perspective and uh, just kind of the talks you've had with him, why do you think that kind of thing translate maybe? Well, I think that um, – I think we saw the attitude. I think we saw the work ethic that um, the kids brought last spring and into the summer conditioning. I think we saw the significant improvements that were made in the strength and conditioning program when it came to, you know, personal records with bench press or squat or power clean. We saw the, you know, the 650 pounds that the team accumulated and, and lean body mass together. Uh, we, we, we saw the, the leadership that we had with uh, Patrick Mahomes coming back. Um, we saw the ability uh, up front in the trenches of, of what's going to be in the future, and we probably overestimated um, the development of, of that offensive line. Um, probably didn't come as soon as what you would hope, uh, but I, I still believe it's, it's going to come. That's going to be a... A tremendous uh, position group for us in, in the years ahead. And I think uh, defensively, I mean, again, you just, you've just you got to be better on the defensive side of the ball to achieve at the, the level that we want to achieve at. How close do you think this football program is to being able to compete for the conference championship? I mean, you spoke about the, the margin, you know, victory and whatnot. How close do you feel like they are from having Well, we, we've, we've got to keep getting better, and that's, that's what I want. I want us to be the best football team that Texas Tech can be next year. Um, I'm optimistic when you have 18 or 19 uh, returning starters coming back that you've got a, a nucleus of young men that uh, know what it's like to compete out here each and every Saturday. Um, I'm excited about, you know, we had 12 mid-year enrollees coming in. Um, those will be young men that are on this campus that can go through spring ball, that can start making their, their adjustment to the speed and the size um, that, that is at the college game compared to the high school game. But um, I think it's the experience and the work ethic and the attitude that's going to be uh, critical for us to um, to have the improvement that, that we, we expect. So again, it's, it's, it, it's, um, it's hard to say how close we are, but we're better than a five and seven football team. We're, we're better than what we showed this year. And, and we just gotta find a way to execute at a consistent level that we saw signs of last Friday night. I, I think uh, we've, gotta, we've gotta find a way to make sure that we play at that, that level each and, every, each and every opportunity that we have. And if we can do that, I think we'll be happy with the outcome. You've said in the past that uh, you said, well, we have to see progress and we expect to compete for championships mm -hmm. when you're talking about coaching staffs. What's the, what's the timeline for that in your mind? Oh, tomorrow? I mean, it. it um, you know, we're not happy with with where we are. We're disappointed, but I still believe that the best thing for us is to stay the course and to um, continue to build the foundation that I think is stronger. It's hard to compare this situation to previous situations. I'm not sure ever any two are ever identical, but. Um, there, there's, 
there's got to be improvement in the outcome um, on the field, and we expect that um, in the short term. With respect to the operational changes day to day, when do you want that arrangement to be in place? Well, spring football. I mean, I think that's the the critical time that um, that that will be important, and uh, I know Coach Kingsbury feels the same way. Of the seven losses you guys had, like four were decided in the last like two minutes. Um, does that mean you know the program's more close to like eight or nine wins? Things have gone differently. You can definitely look at it uh, in that perspective, and and yes, I mean we were one possession away, I think, in four of the seven losses. Uh, at the same time, um, you can't allow your opponent to score 40-plus points in a game and expect to win at a consistent level in college football. So, uh, yes, we were close, but uh, close doesn't count, unfortunately. Obviously, you want number five back, and that's probably not your decision at all. But have you, I mean, any thoughts on that? Have you talked to him at all? Will you? Or? Oh, you know, got a chance to congratulate him Friday night and, you know, thank him for everything that uh, he, he's done uh, up to this point in time and just proud of, of who he is as a person, uh, as a student, as a leader. You won't find a, a greater representative of Texas Tech University than, than Pat Mahomes. What a, an incredible young man. He's, he's put himself in a, in a position to look at all options, and I just want what's best for Patrick Mahomes and uh, obviously would love to have him come and, and uh, compete his senior year here. I think there are a lot of advantages uh, for him to come back and to get his degree from Texas Tech to continue to focus another full year on the sport of football. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, that's a decision for for Pat and his family and couldn't be prouder of him. And he's put himself in a, a tremendous position. So um, just appreciate all he's done and great respect for that young man. And I hope he's, I hope he's back for one more year. How much has your belief in Cliff been reinforced by uh, the fact that he's mostly been working you know, with the offense, especially with the quarterback, and seeing the progress and the, the numbers that they've been able to put up on that side of the ball? Well, he's. We have one of the most efficient, prolific offenses in the country, and um, you know. But there are three phases to this game, and we've seen this year. You have the number one offense in the country, and you finish five and seven. If you're not if you're not executing at the the other two phases of the game, you're not going to get to to where we want to be. So um, I believe that Cliff knows what needs to be done. Um, I think, as we know, his work ethic is impeccable. Um, his love for Texas Tech University is, is unmatched. And um, I know that uh, there won't be anybody more focused or work any harder in the months ahead to, uh, to, to lift the other two phases of this football program up closer to where our offensive performance is. And, and when that happens, then I think we're standing here uh, today with a much different feeling about uh, the direction of the program. When Coach Kingsbury was hired, his resume definitely was there. There were those who questioned his maturity as a head coach. How has he matured and has he matured enough? Well, I think we're always learning. We're always growing. Everybody in this profession, everybody. You know, I think there's a commitment to getting better each and every day. And I think, you know, I've seen signs of uh, being a strong leader and maturing and growing with Coach Kingsbury in the last couple of years. He's made some very uh, difficult decisions uh, related to his staff. He's made uh, decisions related to off-season uh, conditioning programs and staffing uh, for uh, this football program. And I think we're at a point right now where we all understand, Coach Kingsbury included, that there's got to be changes made to the day-to-day -day leadership and operation of this football program to have the success that we expect to have. So uh, I've seen Coach Kingsbury grow uh, in, in his time here, and I think this is another, uh, another uh, turn in, in development and growth with engagement and leadership in all aspects of this football program that I'm excited to see. Kirby, obviously, Cliff has rules. 
between you know, portions of rules, but when you look over the last month and think about the number of scholarship players that they had that were not out there on the field, mm -hmm. guys like the Corey Dolphin, Jerry Moore, Devin Lauderdale, Dakota Allen, Robert Castaneda, Trey Phillips, and um, you mentioned Johnson Giles, you mentioned Derek Willies. What does that say about player evaluation? And I mean, that's a, it seems that's not only scholarships, but a lot of on field practice time, and guys that are giving you zero contribution. To what extent is that? What extent is that an indictment on your coaches? Well, I, I think, Don, it's, it's a concern any time, you know, a, a student athlete who we invite, who we recruit to come to Texas Tech, uh, leaves for whatever reason. It's, it's a concern. And, you know, we, we recruit these young men and student athletes to come in to – one, compete in intercollegiate athletics at the highest level, and, 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 and two, just as important, if not more important, to, to receive their degree, a degree that's going to be life-changing. So when it doesn't work out for, for a young person, that's, that's concerning. And, you know, I've had the opportunity to, to visit with uh, many of the young men that you mentioned um, because you, you want to identify if there are trends in the reasoning behind these young men leaving. And, and there's not a pattern of, of reasons right now. They're all a little unique. And in every situation, Coach Kingsbury has made the right decision, and I support him. But I think you also go back to what we talked about earlier in the evaluation and recruiting philosophy and the changes that have been made there. Um, I think the changes there and, and – um, you know, you, you, you hate to see any young person not be successful and want to leave. But as I've talked to those who you mentioned and, and looked at it from a comprehensive perspective, there's not a pattern of reasoning why, uh, why these are happening. I think it's just an unfortunate set of circumstances that we've been faced with and, and each one have handled the right way. Yeah, again, you know, that's Coach Kingsbury's ultimate responsibility as to the day-to-day -day leadership and operations of our, of our football program. Um, you know, what I alluded to earlier, he's going to be more engaged on the defensive side of the ball than, than he's ever been. That will require uh, additional responsibilities uh, of our other offensive coaches and how Coach Kingsbury decides to uh, allocate those responsibilities that maybe have been sitting on his desk to the other offensive staff, that's ultimately his decision. Um, as Coach Kingsbury knows, we've got, uh, he's got my full support to uh, structure and organize the football uh, operations day to day administratively as well as uh, coaching responsibilities and, and coaching staff. Um, that's, that's his responsibility and I will support him as, as he continues to to make those necessary decisions. Kirby, we've heard reports out of Austin about high-level donors wanting to get rid of their football coach at the time. Have you been under any pressure from the Texas Tech donors to do the same thing for uh, Cliff? You know, I, I have not. I, I will say this, that um, I'm fortunate. I, I believe I'm one of the most fortunate athletic directors in the country to um, have the, the leadership that, that I do and those that I report to. Uh, President Skuvenek is uh, tremendous in his support and leadership of Texas Tech University. Chancellor Duncan is, is awesome. I mean, he, you talk about being supportive and there when you need him. Uh, those, two, those two men, I couldn't be more fortunate to, to, to report to them and the leadership that President Skuvenek provides each and every day. Red Raider Nation, we, we all want to be successful. This was a difficult football season for us all. It, it, it was hard. Nobody's pleased. Nobody's happy. Um, but, you know, I feel fortunate to have the support and the encouragement that, uh, that I have here. And I don't think we could ask to have a, a more supportive 
uh, donor base and those who stand stand behind us and support us each and every day. With, with that said, it's so hard this day and age to block out the noise. It's almost impossible, really. How do you do that? I mean, you've got to do it not only in your role here, but also with the Gallup Football Playoff Committee as well. How do you turn off some irrational views of the, the team and the coach? Well, you, you stay focused. You stay focused on what your core mission is. And uh, for us, that's educate, serve, and grow fearless champions. Our fearless champions are our student athletes. And uh, you stay focused on, on your mission, and you stay between the boundaries with your, your guiding principles uh, that we've set as an athletics department. And, and you keep your focus uh, on, on your mission. And uh, that, that's what I do, and, and with with sole focus on how are we going to continue to elevate this athletics program. The football program is what we're talking about mostly uh, this afternoon um, to the level that, that we expect it to be at. And, and I think we, we all know, and, and especially within this athletics department, just how great Texas Tech athletics and how great Texas Tech football can be. And we're not going to lose sight of that fact. You know, there's so many fans asking for a change of defensive coordinators. Would you remind them that having such a big turnover in the last five years is why they're in that shape to begin with? Well, continu continuity is, is so important. And uh, to have the, the rapid, you know, change that, that we've had in certain leadership positions is not, is not a recipe for success by, by any measure. Again, um, David Gibbs is a very good coach. Um, I think we saw signs of improvement this year and would expect uh, as we continue to build with these upper underclassmen with the juniors that are returning as well as uh, continuing to, re to recruit and build more depth that we'll, we'll see uh, some, some drastic improvements on that side of the ball. You know, I'm personally, I'm, I'm not a, f a fan of five and seven teams getting an invitation to a bowl game. I think bowl game invitations are a reward for a successful football season. Um, so that being said, if, if that was an opportunity that presented itself, I guess it would require a conversation, but it wouldn't be a conversation that I would be excited to have. Um, I bet we were together an hour yesterday afternoon. We, we uh, actually watched the second overtime of the Ohio State-Michigan game together and then uh, probably spent the next hour together. That's correct, yeah. I, I just don't think it's, uh, uh, you know, I, I think bowl games are, are, are great opportunities. I, I believe in the bowl system. Uh, I think they're terrific opportunities to uh, allow young men to experience different communities around our country that otherwise you, would, you might not ever go to, to see different cities, and to have one other opportunity to play uh, on national television against a, a, a good opponent, but uh, you know, I'm I'm personally and professionally not in favor of five and seven football teams participating in bowl games. That's just my personal opinion. If that call were to come uh, for us this season, I'm sure we would have a conversation about it. But I think we'd have to think very very long and in depth about about that. And, and obviously. Yeah, that's I guess that's the that's the piece you want to keep an open mind about. Um, but at the same time, 
you know, we, we want to get healthy, we want to heal, and uh, get, in the, get in the weight room. So I think that's where our, our focus needs to be in our strength and conditioning program over the next uh, six months. And, um, you know, obviously your 15 spring football practices are going to be critical, but I think uh, the, the time that this football team will spend in the, the weight room um, and conditioning are going to be the most critical areas for us as a football team going into next season. Thank <laughs> you.